Jocelyn. So today I'm going to be showing you how to use a light motion for beginners for free. Now the last video I made of this that blew up definitely wasn't for free. I mean I showed you how to do it for free I guess but I had the premium version but now since my membership has expired I have the free version and I'm going to show you guys how to use it with the free version what it's going to look like and yeah let's just get started. So first things first once you open up the app this is probably going to be the page you're going to see um, you're probably going to have a different page than this because depending on what time of year you watch this or day, whatever. Yeah. So, um, you have this little home page. It has all these, like, like information, like, fun stuff you can do. Like, this is for probably more, like, people who already know how to edit. This is just, like, little fun challenges they know to do. But if you're coming to this video and this is not meant to be in a mean way, I'm going to probably assume that you want to learn how to use it. Or you're not too, like, used to editing yet. Or maybe you're coming from another app. So... This is just going to be the home page. Uh, we don't really focus on this unless you want to like do one of the challenges. But yeah, the next section is the tutorials tab. Now, luckily, A Light Motion made their own tutorials. So uh, they're really good. I definitely recommend watching them. They show them for different effects, transitions, just even how to use it for beginners and kind of explaining what everything is, which I'm sure they'll do a better job than I do. <laughs> so yeah. So this next tab, we're going to skip over this and go to projects. This is where all your projects or your edits are going to appear. So any like time you tap this plus and make a project, it's going to appear there. And elements, these are like things like maybe transitions or like colorings that you can save in like right here. They're kind of like think of it as like QR codes or project files from After Effects and Video Star. They're kind of like that and you can just import them into your edit. Like if you want to reuse them again. Now, we're going to go back to this little plus right here, and it's going to have two um, suggestions, project or element. We're not going to focus on element. We're going to focus on project. Now, you can make um, your edit. This is kind of like what you want your edit, like the layout, like the shape to look like. So if you're going for like a movie type edit, I would recommend 16 to 9 or 4 to 3. But if you're going for like a TikTok velocity edit, I would recommend 9 to 16, 4 to 5, or 1 to 1. Or you can even make your own custom ratio of, like, like how you want the layout of the edit to look or, like, the shape. I think that's an easier way to explain it. But for the sake of this one, we're just going to go and do one-to-one. -one, and I'm just going to type in the name. Um, I'm just going to type in tutorial because that's what this is. Um, the resolution is what it's going to be exported in. So your edit or whatever you made on here is going to be exported in. They added in a 2160 or 4K option. 1440 or QHD or 1080p. You're probably only going to want to use these three right here. You can export in these, which will definitely take up a lot less storage, but it will also make the quality lesser and it won't look as good. So I recommend doing it in any of these three up here. I'm just going to do it in 1080p because if you do it in 4K, it gets a bit laggy. So I just wanted to let that be a little disclaimer. Now, when you're ready, go ahead and hit click or create project. Now, as you can see, since I have the free version, I'm going to have the watermark on top. And if you tap the X, you can move it any way you want. You can go to the bottom or you can remove it, which obviously costs money. So um, if you don't want to pay that, you don't have to. So what I'm going to do right now is a lot of people were a bit confused, honestly, on my last video of how I got the audio. I don't have Instagram. How do I do this? Now, I'm going to show you two different ways. One, you can go ahead and go onto YouTube and type in edit audios, just like I am. Sorry, I know I didn't spell it right, but whatever. And then you can choose any of these. You can screen record clips, whatever. Or you can hit this right here, these three dots, hit share, copy link, and then go onto YouTube to MP3 converter. Uh, like any of them will work on Google or Safari. And you just hit download and it will download right to your phone. So yeah, another way that I personally like to do it, I go into that TikTok and I type in audios. And you can choose any audio on here, which I think is a lot easier because that way you just hit save to your phone. Most of the time, they're going to be saveable uh, because they want you to use them. So you're going to want to hold down on the video that you find and hit save video, just like this. So now I'm just going to hop on back over to A-Light Motion. I hope that was a bit easy for you to find out. I should have mentioned the TikTok option in my last video. I guess I wasn't really thinking it out because the good thing for TikTok is I don't think you need an account. But if you do, just go ahead and create a fake email because they don't need real emails for TikTok. So don't worry too much about that if your like, parents will let you have one or whatever the case is. Now, what you want to do is, if you're going to add in an edit audio, so this is basically what the sound of your edit is going to be, you're going to tap this little plus right here. Now, you're probably going to have something that says, like, allow photos to show from gallery or something. You don't want to hit decline, you want to hit allow, and then this will pop up. So, first thing you'll probably see is shapes, 
Uh, they have tons of different options for shapes, but we're not really going to get into those. We're going to get into media right here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to select this audio clip right here. Now, this is the audio that we just got from TikTok. Now, if you go ahead and tap on it, just tap on it. It has all these different options. This is a speed control, so you can change the speed of the audio. Technically, the pitch is what it is, if, since it's just an audio. So you could change that. You can make it slower. You can make it faster. Um, these little options right here are trimming buttons. So if you tap this one, it's going to trim off this side of the video. It's going to trim off your left side. If you tap the middle, it's going to split your video in half. Or if you tap this, it's going to trim the right side of your audio. Now, this right here, it was it's, an, it's a volume adjuster. So you can turn the volume up or you can turn it down if it's too loud. I'm just going to make it, what, I'm just going to make it 100. Okay. So now... This is color and fill. This is basically, if you hit select media, it's going to pop up all your photos and you can add in any photo that you want. This is going to make the video a gradient, which you're probably not going to be needing to use for your audio. Uh, I don't know, unless that's like what you want to do. I don't know. This is just going to change the color of like, if you have like an audio from TikTok and I have like a background photo, it's just going to erase that completely and just add a color in. And this is going to make it so there's no media at all. And you don't ever want to tap this one right here. You just want to stay on this one for now. So then we have move and transform, which is basically how you move your edit and like how you make your edits. Um, I will get into that. I've already gotten into that in a ton of other videos. So if you're curious, go ahead and watch those. I will probably put them in like the little description box or whatever on the top of the video. So yeah. Um, this right here is the move and transform panel. It's oh sorry. <laughs> it lets you slide, it lets you go up and down. Okay. So now this right here, this is a spin panel. It lets you spin your photo any way you want. Um, so yeah, this right here is a zoom in panel. Uh, but it's also not just used for zoom ins. If you tap this little infinity sign right here, you can go ahead and stretch the photo to the side or stretch it up and down, which I think is really neat. And this is a skew bar right here. So you can skew your video any way you'd like, side to side, up and down. You know, it's kind of like the same thing as this, but instead of stretching, it is skewing. So if you're looking at this right here and you're like, what is that? That is called a keyframe. Uh, I try to explain keyframes as best as I can because so many new editors, just like I was a few years ago, had literally no idea what they were. And I would just like to help some people out. So keyframe is basically what starts and what ends your transition. So if I, I'm just going to go ahead and add in a photo real quick, just this photo right here. So what you want to do is if you're going to do a spin transition, I'm just going to duplicate this twice. You guys can completely ignore this part because you probably have no idea what's going on. So just ignore it. What A, a spin transition, um, you just spin it. And keyframes, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and you want to go on to what you tapped. So tap onto your photo, go on to move and transform, and then go on to the little spin bar. Now you want to tap this little diamond with a plus in it. That is going to add one marker. That's the beginning of your keyframe. You want to make sure this is that in the middle or the very beginning of your photo. Now go to the very end of your photo or your clip, video, whatever. Add another one of these things. And then what you want to do is after you have that one added, hold this down and spin it any way you want. I'm just going to spin it to 100 degrees. Now this is a part is so simple, but um, people like myself and tons of other people honestly don't know how to do it because it gets confusing sometimes you want to go in between your keyframes now when i say that that sounds a bit confusing you just want to slide a few frames over just like this you don't have to move the photo you don't have to do nothing you just have to slide your picture so you it's like in between these two diamonds right here because if it's stuck on this diamond you're not going to be able to do a graph it's not going to pop up but if we move over even the tiniest bit a graph is going to pop up now graphs are also a very like hard thing to learn at first but they can't they can be but they also can't be they're also very simple to use in the long run if you use the same ones every time it's going to be very easy now lucky luckily a light motion has pre-made graphs for people who are new i guess well, that's what i assume i still use them and i've been using it for over four years so that i could be completely wrong but they definitely work great for a beginner editors so this right here isn't a graph at all it's just if you want to make your own custom graph whatever this right here is going to be a graph for the beginning of a transition so if it's like i call this an in graph or some people call it graph one it's either one it's just the graph to the first part of your transition now every transition or most transitions have two parts to them it starts in one clip and then ends on another clip so i'll show you what i mean so what you want to do is you just want to tap this right here and i'd like to pull it down a little bit right here and I like to pull it a little bit over here too, so it looks like this. So as you can see, it starts spinning the photo like this. 
um, if you want to, you can hold down on that keyframe and you can slide it all the way to the end of your photo, just like that. So that way it just assures you that um, it's not going to be interrupted or anything um, or just stop randomly. Now, another thing I recommend is when you're on your photo, go to this little effects panel right here, hit add effect, and then go to the search bar and type in tiles. Tiles are make or break an edit, in my opinion. Edits kind of look choppy if they have just like a blank background, unless you're doing like a colorful edit where you want the background to show. But um, personally, I hate blank backgrounds. I love when there's tiles on it. So yeah, once you add tiles, you don't need to mess around with anything. You just need to tap mirror and then you're good to go. Now, I like to also add on, go back to effects, add effect, and then I like to go to the blur category and add on motion blur. It's right here, sorry. So it ends up looking like this. I also have to mute this audio, my bad. Um, so yeah. Now, when you go into your second clip right here, you're going to want to do the exact same thing. So before you do anything else, make sure you go into effects, add effect, and then just re-add tiles on like you did the first time and mirror it. Now, another easy thing you can do is you can go back onto your first clip, and if you kind of forgot how to find the tiles effect, you just tap on it on your first clip, hit these three dots, and then select copy effect, and that way it's copied, so you just go ahead, tap these three dots on your next clip, and hit paste. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that real quick. Now, we're going to go back onto the spin panel, so go to move and transform, go to the little spin bar right here, and add the diamond with the keyframe. Now, do you remember how we spun it to 100 degrees last time? Well, now we're going to spin it to negative 100 degrees. So first we spin it this way. Now we're just going to spin it the opposite way of what we did the first time. Now, as you're probably like, why is my photo stuck? It's because another keyframe isn't added yet. So you're going to go near or at the end of your clip, add one of these other little diamonds or keyframes, and then just pull this back down to when it says zero degrees. So it ends up looking like this. Now, make sure you are in between the keyframes. You're not on it. You just want to move a couple frames. You don't want it to be like this. You want it to be like this. So, go ahead and tap this little graph right here. And then tap this one right here. That is Alight Motion's default out graph or graph 2. I'm trying to make this in easier terms for you guys to understand. What I like to do is I like to pull it up and pull it over just a little bit, just as I did with the first one. And after you're done with that, you should have a complete spin transition. I didn't add motion blur onto this, so I'm going to do that real quickly. And yeah, this is how you do it. Um, I wanted to clarify, this isn't me showing you how to make a edit for beginners. Um, I have a video on that. I have like four videos on how to make a edit for beginners on Alight Motion. They were posted like last year around this time. So you're going to have to scroll a bit or maybe I can put them in the description box if I remember. If I don't, I'm so sorry. But um, they do show you how to make one in depth, how to add your clips, how to find your audio. And yeah, I think making those definitely helps people. I wish they were around when I was first learning this in like 2018. Nobody really used the app in 2018. It was new to everybody kind of. But then we all started collectively using it and yeah, now there's millions of tutorials on the internet for it, thankfully. So I just wanted to let you guys know that. Um, if you're looking to make an entire edit, this is just how to use like the app and the things in it. Explaining what everything is. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much how to use it. And when you're ready to save your edit, ignore what I'm doing here real quick. You're going to want to tap this little thing right here, right by the settings bar. But before you do that, make sure you tap the settings bar. Um, and then you can just readjust anything you needed to that you forgot to add in the first time. So if we're going to do 2160 or like 4K, I'm not going to do that because that takes a while. Um, you just like change anything like if you forgot, oh dang it, I forgot to change the frames per second, which I need to get into this real quick. Um, frames per second, that's basically the frame rate you're, um, video or your edit's going to come out in. If you do it in 12 frames per second, it's going to look super choppy and not nice at all. But if that's like the look you're going for, for kind of like an aesthetic choppy edit, that's definitely what you want to do. But most people, or I do at least, go for 50 to 60 frames per second. I choose 60 frames per second because it comes out the nicest. Now, what you want to do is right next to that settings wheel, tap this little share button right here. This is going to pop up. Uh, you don't really have to play with any of this, but if you do want good quality, tap on video. Um, and you can just change the quality, export resolution, whatever you want. I made my quality all the way high just because I like it that way. And then you're just going to tap export. And um, if you have a free version, it's going to say, oh, you want to become a member? Uh, if you don't want to, that's completely fine. Just hit no thanks. I like the watermark, okay? So we're going to go ahead and continue. 
I'm going to wait for it to save. It could take a couple seconds depending on how long it is. Uh, ads are probably going to pop up. Just ignore those. And this is what your transition is going to look like when you're done. And when you're ready to save your edit or whatever you did to your camera roll, just hit save and it should automatically save. And yeah, uh, I really hope this video helped you guys out. I loved kind. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love helping people learn how to use this app because I wish I had people teaching me like in depth how to use it when I first started and there was literally nothing. So I feel good that I can help people at least get a better understanding of it. Um, and yeah, that was it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and comment down below any tutorial requests that you guys may have. Um, yeah, I love you guys so, so much and yeah, bye. Mm -hmm.